The Appalachian region has some of the richest temperate forests in the world. But coal mining was a real economic driver for quite a long time. Mining around here began in the early 1800s, possibly even into the 1700s. And we have both impacts to safety, to the environment, and also to the water here. We have pockets of mine lands all over the place that are just grass when they were formerly forested. And without the intervention that we're coming in and doing, they would never function as a natural ecosystem again. What the mining companies would do is come in, cut all of the valuable timber, everything else just kind of bulldoze out of the way, and then they would drill down to the coal seam, blast off all of that rock overburden, they'd scoop up the coal, and then they had to put the mountains back and seed them. They severely compact the land. We lose the native diversity. They became just almost dead zones for wildlife. And it really hinders native forest reestablishment. My name's Anna Branduzzi. I'm reforestation coordinator with Green Forest Work. I'm Michael French, Director of Operations for Green Forests Work. And our mission is to restore healthy, productive forests on mined lands across the Appalachian region and beyond. These areas before they were mined were healthy, productive, biodiverse forests. Oaks, hickories, cherries, maple, poplar, hemlocks, and pines. But in recent decades, surface mining became really widespread. Reforestation used to be a common practice, but after the Surface Mining Act was passed, they began compacting everything to prevent landslides, erosion, and then they seed it with aggressive grasses and legumes to really green everything up. And it became very costly to reestablish forests on these sites because the ground is so compacted and so tight, the trees would either die or would be very stunted. So what we do is deal with the invasive exotic species using herbicides or a small bulldozer to get everything back down to a blank slate. After the grasses are set back, we come in with bulldozers with ripping shanks on the back to decompact the site. So as the bulldozer drives the lawn, it's ripping up the land, it's pulling up boulders. After we decompact the land, we see the benefits right away. Native forest adjacent to these mine lands who begin seeding into the site. Wildlife start spreading seeds. We see wildflowers blooming. Water and nutrients are able to infiltrate the soil so that the trees have a greater chance of survival. And then we come back in the spring with a really good mix of native tree species and we're ready to plant them. The highest priority projects have both environmental and a health and safety hazard to them. This has been this way for probably a hundred years or better. So we make sure that there's funding and prep the site so that the trees have a great success rate to get the site reclaimed back to what it would naturally look like prior to any mining taking place here in Pennsylvania. We're here at the Galitzin State Forest today with a professional tree planting crew. This area was mined in the 80s and 90s and restored to a hay or pasture post mining land use, but it was never used as intended. So we're looking to reforest this property now to restore the forest type that was present before mining. In 2021, Green Forest's work is working with One Tree Planted to reforest about 800 acres of formerly mined lands. And we expect these areas, after 50 years, to sequester about 80,000 metric tons of CO2. We 
have to work with a lot of partners here to get the project completed. It takes a lot of people, so it's not just one organization alone. PEC and Green Forest Works and DCNR and Game Commission and you name it. We all have different interests in this, and that's what's great about these projects. They hit so many levels from carbon sequestration to water quality that it can bring different stakeholders like this to the table. Since 2009, Green Forest's work has reforested about 5,000 acres through the planting of more than 3.1 million trees. But there's still about a million acres out there that could benefit from further reforestation practices. So we're really just starting to ramp up and scale up.